Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division with various type of win. These are old recordings but used to demonstrate how to play these holes in the Vineyard Acres 9 hole cup as we cannot find any of the holes from the front tee. The video here is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic and before we start don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the button in the bottom right corner of the game screen. Also visit golfclashtommy.com for more Golf Clash related content for free. You can also get the, the ultimate tournament and tour text guides by going to patreon.com slash golfclashtommy. Link in the description down below. The info box on the right hand side will ex like will display the elevation adjustment for the first, for the second and also for the third if we do have three shots to play. Also what type of ball and clubs I do feel is going to be the best ones to use uh, for that specific hole. Have in mind that you don't need to follow that, you might have different type of clubs that you want to play with and if you do have any questions about that make sure you comment in the comment section below or go to the website golfclashtommy.com and send me an email and I will definitely help you out. Last but not least if you enjoy it please take your time hit thumbs up would be awesome if we could see a hundred thumbs up on this video. Thank you so much for watching and let's freaking go to hole number one. For hole number one, we are going for green. Here I would say that the Titan Ball would be the best ball to play with here due to its power three. Four and a half bar top spin and four and a half bar side spin to the right. Four and a half bar side spin to the right is the maximum with a side spin two ball. You can see that we do have a little tailwind together with the crosswind, so pay close attention to what I'm gonna do here. I stretch out into the position where I want my ball to bounce, and from there I do adjust my rings. This is to uh, get the understanding of how much of overpower I do need to use uh, after my adjustment, especially now when we do have a little tailwind. I'm using a lot of curl as well, or let's say I'm using as much curl to the right possible with the extra mile that I'm having. And the plan is to get it obviously to the green if possible, but otherwise we're going to have it on the left side of the green for a very simple wedge towards the pin. So, once again, to summarize this one a little bit, this one needs to be an eagle if you're gonna have any chance of winning the tournament. Two, side spin, very valuable here. Side spin to minimum. And then last but not least, play with a driver that gives you the most distance possible because the distance will also be very, very valuable so you can go directly over the rough instead of having to bounce over the rough as our opponent did there. Obviously now the opponent is in the rough but even if he or she wouldn't be into the rough that way that short iron that would be from that spot would be difficult. As seen here once again we do have a wedge towards the pin and the wedge here we are obviously going to have to be very focused but when the wind is so minor we should never be adjusting outside the cup here because then we will most likely miss because the ball will not be affected as much by the wind. Elevation for the drive 20% extra so the ball will be affected more by the wind and we uh, in the end are not going to use any elevation for the second shot while being around the green if we do have to bounce before the bunker and roll up as our opponent the second shot is played minus 10 percent due to the uphill adjustment We come to hole number two and here we're either going to play with the sniper or the viper and what would make us what is the decide maker here like the the one attribute that we are deciding between is the backspin if we do have the sniper level five we are going to have three bars of backspin then that's the club for us to play with otherwise it's going to be the viper we're going to have to play very close to the rough line at the bottom if only being able to use three bars of backspin now going to adjust medium distance with a 20 percent over adjustment as you could see on the ball guideline as well we're aiming deliberately on the left side of the pin because the plan here is to come from the left and roll in towards the pin 
on that is on the center this is a very tough part three so make no mistake here that this is not some uh, some hole that we can just go and get an hole in one on i would prefer to play with a marlin here as i do not feel that even if we play with a kingmaker or titan or katana quasar or any type of ball like that we will not benefit that much from it so therefore i stick with the marlin having a little side spin little wind resistance and then that's gonna uh, then that's going to be uh, fine and uh, you know i see left side of the pin medium distance 20 percent over adjustment and then we are going to be close obviously if having more backspin use more backspin and aim further off uh, further up on that fairway For hole number three, I would consider this one to be the best albatross attempt that we do have of the Vineyard Acres. Now I'm going to play with somewhere between two to four bars of topspin, as much side spin to the right possible, and then we're aiming very close to the rough line on the right. You can see that I have a little gap from the yellow ring to the right by the rough there, adjusting max plus 10 so we do make an over adjustment meaning that the ball will be affected a little bit more by the wind half a ball of curl outside the adjustment ring to the right you can go with more if you want to because it will not really hurt you and i want to explain why i'm not why i don't want you to use more than four bars of topspin here the reason for that is let's say that you are going to use six bars of topspin or even more if you do have that possibility then you will most likely end up into the rough on the left hand side and from there it's not going to be difficult to to reach the green but it's going to be difficult to have an attempt for the albatross whatsoever so getting over the water there which is obviously key here to get this uh, get this albatross attempt in a good way and look here what our opponent is doing sure it's going to stop just by the rough but picture that by being using more top spin there and that's why it's also having having a lot of side spin is super duper valuable now we're going to be close to max distance most of the times with the backbone and the backbone is a good club due to its better accuracy and also better ball guideline than other long irons especially in a lower level sure those of you having higher level clubs like a grizzly level 7 do have a massive ball guideline to play with and therefore that uh, therefore that club would be better in that way those of you playing with a Saturn can use the backspin shot which is going directly on the green trying to catch the funnel on the top end of the green and fall down towards the pin I'm using topspin here doing a rough bump no elevation and then you just try to measure what type of club distance you are at and this is once again it's going to be a good opportunity for an albatross but no one uh, not, uh, not an albatross that you can count with but I would say kind of close to For hole number four, we are going to play with our long iron here, and here preferably play with the one that do have the best accuracy and the ball guideline. I'm using one bar of backspin, trying to aim directly at the pin, but look, I leave the ball guideline short of pin due to not having a, having a fully developed ball guideline. Aiming directly at the pin with not a fully developed ball guideline will equal 100% that you will come in too hot. Now I do adjust maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment, but I do want you to play with maximum distance with a 20% over adjustment because the reason we're not playing with a 20% is also the reason why we miss to the left side of the hole. Backbone, mauling, and then remember the 20% over adjustment and then you're gonna do this hole so, so fine. There is no obstacles whatsoever to be afraid of. Therefore, this is a good chance for an hole in one. For hole number five, we're gonna play a tough par five. And the reason I say this is a tough par five is due to the, especially the second shot. Four and a half bar top spin, and then max side spin to the left. We do want the ball to bounce underneath the tree, the tree branch. And you know, it's not wrong to actually have a position that is further right, further right 
that and the reason for that is that we do not want to have the ball clip or like having the ball clipping the trees then we're gonna go uh, too short and that's going to be difficult maximum distance with a 10 percent over adjustment so based on this video here move out a notch to the right and then use a little curl to the left instead that would be better instead of taking the risks as we are doing now the ball is then going to travel down on the fairway and we do want to gain as much distance possible but the most important part is that we do want to stay as close to the left side of the rough possible why it's because from there we will then have a shorter distance towards the pin as this is not a linear hole means that we're playing straight forward we're then playing left if we would be straight in the middle of that fairway or we're more to the right even if we have a longer drive uh, and then what we would be if we have a drive that is to the left in terms of yardage then we would still be further away from the pin if we are more to the right side of the fairway than being on the left so we need to think about that trying to once again be as close to the left side possible on that fairway very close to the rough the closer the better but obviously we don't want to be in the rough that's obviously uh, like a no-brainer <laughs> power three ball as i already explained we need it we need it especially for the second shot and you're gonna notice why second shot is going to be played without elevation so we are not gonna play uphill or downhill or anything and we're only going to focus on getting this ball to bounce over the rough and the sand we do need to add a little backswing because otherwise we will most likely roll over the green completely and that's not something we do want to do one and a half bar backspin a stretch out to see the initial like the second bounce that we do want to have so you can see that I stretch out into overpower and then we do adjust and we adjust max distance no elevation whatsoever and then we're going to have to go with in many of the cases a little overpower because in the end we want the ball to bounce on a higher point than what it's possible to do so therefore we do need to add overpower unfortunately i do clip the rough in that way so i would strongly recommend to give yourself a little bit more room than what i gave myself there but it's going to be a very tough par 5 and especially if you're not playing with a power 3 ball you're gonna have to somewhat go with max overpower here and we're gonna see this here to be um a hole that costs people the eagle and then we will get the birdie instead so if you can consistently get an eagle here be sad For hole number six we are going to play on the right hand side using a driver that gives us distance which is the extra mile three bars of top spin two and a half bar side spin to the right and we're looking at the ball guideline here very important that the ball guideline is pointing straight down in the middle and we are going to make an adjustment of 10 percent over adjustment and even though we're not entirely into max distance, we're still going to use max distance as a reference here for hole number six and the drive. Ball coming into here, bouncing up there on the little hill or like the plateau or whatever we can call it. And this is the spot that we are looking for. Now, once our opponent is taking our shot, let's focus on the second shot for ourselves, And that is going to be played with the sniper or with the viper. And here it all do depends on what club that gives you the best ball guideline and the best accuracy. I would say that, you know, using a sniper with less than two bars of backspin is going to be difficult. Not in the way per se that you will miss the birdie but to get the eagle because now we do need to find ourselves in a position where we at least need to give ourselves a go for a drop here and that's going to be most likely with the the sniper but you know as a backup have the viper so now second shot here now we're going to play as you see with the viper due to the sniper being in too low of a level and therefore I'm gonna play with the Viper and I would say use the sniper if you have it in level 4 or higher otherwise go with the Viper 3 bars of backspin, 2.5 bars spin to the left, 2nd bounce on the fringe 
And second mounts on the fringe will tell you that you will have enough speed to the pin and you will not also come in too hot. Minus 10% and the reason we're going to play 10% is because we are just before that little hill there and then it is played as an uphill adjustment because then the ball is not going to be affected as much as normal. A massive little boom here for hole number 6. Hole number seven is the final par three in this playthrough, and this par three is not difficult at all. It looks like it, but it is not, and that's because we can actually play this one without any side spin whatsoever. I would recommend though to play with a Marlin to reduce the wind a little bit, but also to have a little side spin if we do have a strong crosswind coming either left to right or right to left, so we don't have to aim super duper close to the rough line. We're going to play this one medium distance with a 10% over adjustment and we're playing with two bars of backspin with the second bounce up on top of the fringe because we do want the ball to bounce on the fairway up above the bunker and then fall down towards the pin. Now we are a little bit too much to the right and that's totally fine though but speed wise is very very good. So once again with this hole here medium distance with a 10% over adjustment second bounce after you have added spin to be on the fringe because then you want the ball to bounce on the fringe take the little slope that is there above the uh, after the the fringe and then roll down towards the pin backbone due to its accuracy and the ball guideline goliath is not wrong saturn is not wrong but my goal too long For hole number 8, the final of the par 4s, we're going to play with 4.5 bar topspin and as much a side spin to the right possible. But in the end though, is it worth playing with 4.5 bar topspin here to uh, risk going that close to the left hand side? Because you can see on this fairway, it slopes right to left, okay? So we do need to have that in mind when we're playing this shot because the ball is going to be pushed to the left. So we do need to apply curl once we have applied the spin. Half a ball of curl to the right is going to make it enough and I do adjust maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment. And you can see there that even if we do use curl, we use side spin 3 ball, we are still get pushed to the left. And then you can just uh, imagine how difficult this hole is going to be if you do play with any form of ball that do not have side spin 3. To just have it said, this is my opponent's uh, second shot here using the Guardian and the only problem he has here is with distance. I do love the fact that he's show is choosing the Guardian and that's the club that I would recommend you to choose as well even though it's in level 1. Why you may ask? It's because even though you have a sniper in level 6 and 7 you're not gonna have the backspin enough to get the ball to stop on the green and fall back for a chance of an eagle. Then we would only be playing it as we would be playing it for a birdie and that's not really what we want to do on a par 4. So second shot for us is going to be with the big dog as you know sniper is in a very low level but, and the big dog has the distance. But the problem with the big dog is once again we do not have the backspin because the thing that I would like to do is to use the backspin of the guardian to aim for the second bounce on the back end of that fairway because then it can slope down towards the uh, towards the pin. Very difficult one to to manage to make an eagle on, but it's going to be the best one. Guardian club here once again instead of the big dog instead of the sniper because the guardian has generally a good distance. It also does have the backspin and then in the end we it can compensate with that by using minimum and power 2 ball because in the end though just face it we don't want to play on that tiny little uphill slope before the green to just get the ball to stop on the green that's just going to be difficult in itself so just to summarize the drive we do need side spin uh, to minimum we also need to have a driver that gives us curl aim close to the right hand side don't use more than four and a half bar top spin as you otherwise can roll too long then second shot guardian 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 is going to be the club other that otherwise you go with the wood club that gives you the most uh, most backspin after that and then you will most likely have to apply overpower no elevation for the second shot where we do have 10 percent over adjustment for the drive
Last but not least, we're going to play a very tough par 5 where an eagle is going to be considered a drop. Use the quarterback, use two bars of top spin, and then use a side spin to the right if you can. You don't have to use side spin, but I normally play with side spin to the right on this hole here. The only important thing here is to get this ball as close to the top of the rough possible, okay? The reason we want to do that is because it's going to help us when playing the second shot. Two bars of topspin is generally okay. Three bars of topspin wouldn't be wrong, but that could, with a tailwind in your back, be making the distance not as you want to. 10% over adjustment for the drive. And you can also see in the info box that I do have three elevation numbers. And that is because we're going to play three shots here. You cannot reach the green in two shots uh, if not reaching over all that big piece of rough. And to just have that said, you do need to have at least a 10 mile per hour direct tailwind and combine with at least seven bars of topspin to be able to get over there. So that's not going to be a shot that you can do in rookie division. I just want to have that said. Now for the second shot, we're gonna go straight forward. And here we either use the big dog or we use the horizon. Why do I suggest the horizon, you may ask? It's because of its top spin. It might not have as many yardage as the big dog, but it does have a lot of top spin. And the only thing that we are looking for is to get the ball down and past the trees that we do have on the right, okay? So with the big dog, I'm using six bars of top spin. I have to go with max overpower to gain as much distance possible. And you can see here that there is the trees. There has the trees ended. And that's the position we do want to be at. Now, we are not done, obviously. <laughs> we are still going to play a short iron towards the pin. Short iron is going to be the one that you prefer to use. For me personally, it's the thorn, but I would recommend that if you do have a, a different type of short irons to, to choose between and you're not really found, found about any of them, choose the one with the best ball guideline as a first go, because the ball guideline will help you tremendously when aiming for the pin. So, no elevation for the second shot, and here you can see we have an open shot towards the pin. We're going to play this one very close to maximum distance. I would say this should be adjusted approximately three quarters of a club, 75%. But it's difficult as well though, because in the end it's very hard to replicate the position after the second shot all the time. So we're going to have to adapt, we're going to have to try to build a reference uh, depending on where we end up after the second shot. Because you're not going to have any yardage to play with. You're not going to have anything, basically. I'm using, I'm not using any spin here. It's not wrong to use a bar or two. But normally I don't use any spin here. Trying to get this ball to just bounce and then roll towards the pin. Very unlucky not getting the eagle. But, once again, an eagle here on hole 9 is considered an extra drop. So don't be mad on yourself if you do get a birdie on this very tough par 5. 10% over adjustment for the drive. Nothing for the second, nothing for the third, power three ball minimum would be my goal on here on hold nine. Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for rookie division with various type of win on these holes as they are not possible to be found from the front tee. And in the end, follow the info box on the right hand side for the information that is needed. Don't forget to get the best tournament guides on the market by going to patreon.com slash golfclash. Tommy link directly in the description down below. Video here is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic. Thank you once again for watching and good luck in the Vineyard Acres 9 Hole Cup.